All right, what's up everyone? Here we are at the Engineering Academy and we wanted to give a quick overview of the V5 motors and some, some tips for uh, changing cartridges, etc. So what we have, the V5 motor, we all already uninstalled the top housing. Uh, what's really cool is if you pull the CAD up, uh, what you could do is do a cross-sectional analysis and go into the motor and look at uh, like the layers of the motor so you can see all the stages, the reductions that are happening from the DC motor all the way out to the output. Uh, I really appreciate this design uh, and primarily because of the ease of changing the cartridges in and out. So super cool way, you know, you could create uh, just a reduction at the motor rather than, you know, uh, another reduction outside the motor through gears or, or sprockets. <clears throat> so in saying that, we have three different cartridges that all have certain RPMs um, that will increase the RPMs. And you think about, okay, so we have a 100 RPM, a 200 RPM, and a 600 RPM. So they're color coded. You can look inside the viewport, which is really cool. Uh, once you have them installed, there's a the viewport and you'll know what the RPM is. And then with that, you know that there's certain, there's different stall torques, you know, uh, from the output. So the 600 RPM, that's gonna be your faster output, but you know, if speed goes up inversely, then the torque will go down. So then we go to the 200 RPM and you've got your torque and speed, you know, hitting kind of this medium range or below medium. And then you have this 100 RPM. So due to the RPMs being very low, and we know the output uh, of the motor through the planetary would, and, and that kind of clarifies that this motor right here would be your high torque uh, motor cartridge. So a uh, couple things to keep in mind on the motors is that they have some tabs that allow them to go into slots and inserts so that they align correctly. And then if you look inside here, uh, you've got the, you know, the rings, the sun. So these are planetary gear sets, which is really cool. Um, and something goes wrong, you can open these up and look at them just so you have a better understanding of, you know, what planetary gear sets are. So based on what I've seen on the bottom, I can now look inside the V5 motor and see that there is a slot. So there's a slot right here. And if I look at the bottom where my input's coming in, I have a tab. So, so that tab that's right here goes into that slot. And one thing you gotta keep in mind, you may have to turn uh, the planetary gear set just so that you can align the teeth uh, properly for this thing to seat. So there's the tab, the tab's at the back. I'm going to drop that in. And right then it actually seated. So when it's seated, you can see that this is close to the same plane, right? If it's not seated, it'll set up higher. And you can see just by me turning it slightly, those teeth aren't meshing. But once you get them to mesh, it'll drop down, it'll seat in. And now you can install the housing. So you can change these cartridges, do tests with them. It's a, if you set your build up really uh, efficiently, you can pull the motors pretty quick and do a cartridge change just so you can physically see uh, what's happening with the RPMs and the torque loads. So I'm going to go ahead and put this housing on. And when you're looking at this, a couple things to take in consideration is that the threads that are on these posts, the motor posts, <laughs> they're standoffs, so the 832s. And if you can get a half inch into these posts, you're, you're doing really great. So always take into account uh, where your sheet metal or your C channels coming together. So if you had an 060 and then 060, it's 120 thou. So you need to, you know, add that on to 500 thou. And then, you know, you, you want to get very close to 0.675 in that range. So you get full contact on these motor posts. It just works out really well. So don't use, you know, a, a, a depth on a bolt that is uh, too, too shallow because you can do damage and just be careful when you're threading these in uh, with the 832s. 
So we've got our screws that are still in our housing. And the cool thing is when we drop this thing on, things start lining up and you can see that we can see through the viewport, everything's seated. So what we can do, go in a zigzag pattern, start dropping these in. <clears throat> and we have a couple different size uh, Phillips head screwdrivers. And another thing I want to mention is when you're putting these together, if you'll keep everything on a tabletop, what's happening is the table is actually pushing up on the motor and then we're pushing on the motor, then again, transversely through to that, this tabletop. So it's the whole physics thing, like ground is pushing up on the table, table's pushing down, and then the net forces are zero, so things are remaining the same. So, because if you hold them in your hand, it's going to require more energy and you can wear yourself out just by not using the benches and everything properly. So just mean, make sure you think about things like that uh, so you can last 38 hours on robot builds. Uh, so I'm seating these and when I'm done seating these, then we'll bench test this to make sure everything's proper. So it's 100 RPM. All of my bolts are proper. Drive that one down a little further. Okay, those are proper. The casing, so if I start looking at the casing, everything's aligned on that. Now the next thing is to bench test it. So we have our uh, battery and we have a controller. We're gonna plug in one of the V5 cables. Remember those tabs are in the center and then you can always identify with tab up, left side should, is yellow, right? <clears throat> Going into the, the brain. What we want to do is go to devices and a couple things that are going to happen. So this is going to turn red. Okay, the, a solid one means we have good data and we also have power. So because we have it in port one, it shows up in our device info and then it is a red. So I would want to go ahead and change this and that helps for the encoder counts and everything for the degrees and revolutions. So on here, you have the revolutions, you have the degrees, you have velocities down here. It's in rotations per minute. And then you have power. So you have your wattage, which is the combination of your voltage, your amperage, and then you have your Newton meters. So typically we change these into inch pounds for us, uh, but we also understand what the Newton meter is. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this on the screen to start that motor. So that is in a positive direction, which is indicated right here on the screen. And you can see that the motor is turning. So this is 100 RPMs, it's slow, but it's very strong. So if you had an, an axle with a wheel, what you'd be able to do is put a load on it and watch where the, it'll, it'll start firing, you know, start drawing more amperage into it. And then you would also see this torque also change on the screen. So axle, wheel, you can grab a hold of it, start doing tests. So then, you know, just to test the performance, you can turn it all the way up. You see that just with no load free spin, that you're at 0 0.8, so 0 0.75, 0 0.8, as far as your watts and 0.1 uh, Newton. So uh, really cool to check this data on here, keep an eye on it. You can also do the calculations that allow you to hit these targets without exceeding you know, the motor limits. That way you, you don't stall the motor to overheat them, so on and so forth. So I can turn that off and you can see that we went 21,079 degrees. And then you also have the revolutions that are indicated right here. Now, the cool thing is you can reset these encoders on the screen, boom. So I'm now at zero. So if you were testing mechanisms or something, you, you would be able to go on screen, boom, reset those encoders, check your degrees, and be able to do a, quite a few tests and then actually give that data to the programmer and then they would fine tune it after that. So this is cartridge install and also V5 brain use and uh, thank you for allowing us to share and have a great day.